Welcome. Now, it's been a while since I've done a Quest Tips video, and I thought with Christmas coming up and a bunch of new Quest users joining the community, now would be the perfect time to create a new tips video for those users who are still getting used to the Quest platform. But by no means is this tip video just limited to beginners. I think even if you are a more experienced user, you'll probably find some tips in here that will be useful to you too. Now to be honest, I could have made a tips video with 50 tips or even 100 tips, but what I wanted to do is distill it down to those top 10 essential tips that, in my opinion, every Quest user needs to know. So like I say, if you do like this video, giving it a thumbs up really helps the channel. And you might want to check out my other content. If you like that too, you might consider subscribing, which would be much appreciated. So now join me as we check out my top 10 essential quest tips. We all know about the official Quest store, but did you know there are two more places where you can get Quest games and experiences that aren't contained in the official store? There's App Lab and then there's SciQuest. So App Lab contains games and experiences that you can download straight to your Quest headset. You can get App Lab games by searching for them directly in store if you know the name of the game, or access a website like these from your Oculus browser to look at the list of available games. I will include these website URLs in the description. The other place you can get games and experiences is SideQuest. Unlike App Lab, SideQuest requires a bit more setup, but it's really not too difficult. SideQuest works by sideloading content onto your headset, which requires a computer or Android mobile device and a cable to connect your headset to that device so that you can transfer the data from SideQuest to your headset. There's a simple set of instructions you can get on SideQuest that will tell you everything you need to know to get it set up, and I will link those instructions below. App Lab and SideQuest contains hundreds of free games, paid games, demos, experimental experiences, pre-releases, alphas, and betas. Unlike the official Quest store, these games haven't undergone a rigorous review process, so it's a real mixed bag of the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. So if you want some ideas on where to start, I have a whole series showcasing some of the best App Lab games and free games that I will link in the description below. And finally, if that's not enough games for you, there are also web browser games. I'll leave a link to some of the web browser games below, but essentially you put those links into your Oculus web browser and you're able to play a VR game from your actual web browser itself. Now these games tend not to be fantastic, but there are a few quality ones, such as Moonrider, which is like a Beat Saber clone. The Quest has been around for a while now, and over that time it has acquired some pretty awesome experimental features. Hand tracking and augmented reality are two features that I would highly recommend checking out. Hand tracking is what you might expect. It allows you to control the Quest menu and some compatible games using nothing but your hands. It's real simple to use too, just put your controllers down somewhere out of the way, make sure you are in a sufficiently lit environment, and the Quest will begin to track your hands. If you want to know where to start with some hand tracking experiences, then take a look at my video linked in the description below that looks at some hand tracking experiences you can get for the Quest. This video is a little old, so there are some hand tracking experiences that aren't included on it. Nonetheless, it should still give you a nice little introduction to hand tracking. The Quest also recently began to support augmented reality games. It uses the external tracking cameras to view your outside world and overlays digital images to give you an AR experience. The external cameras on the Quest are grainy black and white, so it's not the best AR experience out there, but it's still pretty cool to see zombies chasing you around your very own house or to see yourself holding an AR gun. I have a couple of videos where I play some of these AR games, which I will link in the description below if you want to learn more about that. At the moment, most AR experiences you'll find on SideQuest, with the exception of some like Blast On. This is from the official Quest store. This is, in my opinion, one of the best multiplayer games you can get on the Quest, and it has recently got this update that lets you play in pass-through mode. Now, I started recording footage natively on my Quest headset and forgot that native recordings don't pick up 
pass through. So all you're seeing here is a black background. So I had to record it in a special way and here you can actually see the pass through mode in action. Across from me is my opponent and you're seeing my surroundings like my bookcase and arcade machine all outlined in this cool neon color. The pass through AR feature works really well in this game. So if you want to try some AR using your Quest headset and are also after an awesome multiplayer game, then I highly recommend checking out Blast On. And finally, since we are talking about features that every Quest user needs to try, then I recommend trying these games, Traversal or T for God. You can currently get both of them for free from App Lab, and what makes them so special is that they allow you to walk through the entire game without ever having to leave your play space. That means no thumbstick movement, no teleportation, you are actually walking through the entire game using your legs, which brings immersion to the next level and is something I think every Quest user needs to try at least once. One of the things I love to do with my quest is to personalize it and make it my own. And there are plenty of ways to do this through using different accessories or decorations like these vinyl stickers, customizing your own avatar and choosing your own home environment. Another lesser known thing is that you can add your own non-official environment too. If you go over to SideQuest or this Quest Homes Discord channel, you'll get access to a variety of different custom home environments for your quest. Many of them are really well done and contain scenes from your favorite video games, movies and TV shows. Many of them even have their own sounds too. Bear in mind, because these are unofficial, sometimes you do get a warning pop up from within your quest headset warning you about using them. And sometimes they may even stop working after you get a quest update. But I've been using these custom homes for a while now and never had any serious problems apart from sometimes, like I said, them stop working after a new update, in which case I simply just uninstall them and choose another home environment. The Quest Guardian system for me is like a necessary pain in the butt. On the one hand, setting it up and having it appear whenever you reach the edge or your play space is a massive immersion breaker and frankly, very annoying. But on the other hand, I totally understand why it's there. And while I've never suffered any injuries in VR, I have seen many who have. While I recommend having it enabled, if you have developer mode on, you are able to disable the Guardian system in the developer menu. If you don't know what developer mode is or how to get it, check out the SideQuest install instructions link in the description below and that will show you how. So next what I'm gonna do is go through a few handy tips I have to keep you in your play space. The first is the quick pass through feature. Double tap the side of your headset and it allows you to see your environment in path through mode without needing to take off your headset. So that can be handy if you just wanna quickly look around you and your environment. If you want to see your guardian quickly, you can also enable the glanceable boundary feature. If you quickly look down at an angle whilst that is activated in VR, it will show you where you are in your play space. You can of course adjust the sensitivity of the barrier too, so that only appears when you get fairly close to the edge. So if you reduce the sensitivity, you'll have to get closer to the guardian for it to appear and it will appear less often because of that. Now of course, all of this is still immersion breaking, so my favorite tip is to get some kind of floor marker or mat that isn't going to be a tripping hazard to mark the edges of your play space. For instance, the mat in my lounge happens to be the perfect size so that if I stay within the edges, I know I will not make contact with anything on the outside world. If I go too far, I feel the floorboards beneath my feet, which tells me I'm coming to the edge of my play space. And of course, as a last result, I have my guardian system active so that if I'm so immersed in the game, I don't even realize I'm off the mat, the guardian system will come up. So even though that has never happened to me, it's always good to have the guardian in place as a final fail safe. The right accessories are key to having a comfortable and immersive experience, and you don't need to spend an arm and a leg either. The top two accessories that I would say are most essential are a good head strap and some decent headphones and lens protectors if you wear glasses inside your headset. Let's start with the head strap. The stock Quest 2 strap I find, quite frankly, to be uncomfortable. 
especially when playing for extended periods. So would I personally buy an official Quest Elite strap? Well, no. They are comfortable, but I have heard too many stories about them breaking, and there is this handy Reddit article here from someone who knows a lot more about the subject than I do, saying that some poor design choices make it just a matter of time before the Elite strap breaks. I've heard though that there are also many people who don't experience these problems, so you might be fine, but in my opinion why take that risk, especially when there are other straps out there that are just as good or better and costing around the same price or maybe even cheaper. For example, in this video which I link below, I compare the Elite strap to a Kiwi Design strap. The Kiwi Design strap in all of my tests seemed just as comfortable, sturdier and cost about the same as the Elite strap, so for me, out of the two straps, the Kiwi Design strap is the better choice. But don't just take my word for it, there are quite a few good straps out there, I'll give a link in the description of a video comparing a few of them so you can check that out. But whatever strap you go for, this would be the first thing I would upgrade. Second thing would be over ear headphones. When it comes to immersion, nothing beats a good pair of headphones to get that full spatial audio experience. The head strap I use on my Quest 2 here is the Vive Deluxe audio strap with special adapters that allow it to connect to my Quest. It also has some great off-ear headphones too, so it's a brilliant head strap, but an expensive one at that. But like I say, you don't need to go crazy expensive with a strap and headphones like I did. For example, I used to use these HyperX Cloud 2 headphones, costing about 60 US dollars or cheaper. They are great headphones, great sound, very comfortable. The only disadvantage is that they don't have an L-shaped audio adapter, so the jack kind of sticks out, and if that's an issue for you, you might want to find another pair for that reason that either has an L-shaped jack or a removable jack and then you can buy an L-shaped jack separately to use with them. And be aware that I'm not saying that the HyperX Cloud 2 headset is the best headset you can get. All I'm saying is that I've used those over-ear headphones in the past and they seem to be a great pair of headphones, especially for the price. But if you don't already own a pair of over-ear headphones, then by all means do your own research to find the best pair for you in terms of quality and your budget. But whatever you do, avoid cheap headphones like these clip-on ones designed for the Quest. The frequency range on them is atrocious. You won't get those bass notes nor those mid to high treble sounds. Basically, the sound quality is crap. Just compare the frequency range of these cheap ones compared to the HyperX Cloud 2 headset. Big difference. Finally, I don't wear glasses myself, but I know lens protectors are pretty important if you're wearing your glasses inside your headset as your glasses could touch and mark the Quest lenses over time, causing permanent damage. There's also a glasses spacer that does come with the headset to give you a few extra millimeters between your glasses and the Quest lenses, but that might not be enough, so it's always a good idea to have those lens protectors in place too. The other option if you don't fancy wearing your glasses in your VR headset is to get a set of prescription lens adapters like you see here. You put your own personal lens prescription values into the website and they create these prescription lenses that go inside your headset so you don't need to wear your glasses when using your headset. Other than that, there are all sorts of other accessories that you can get for a better experience like this fake leather replacement facial interface or a battery pack and pack holder for extended playtime. The replacement facial interface kits are great, especially if you're gonna get sweaty in VR. I highly recommend having one of these ones you can easily wipe down. Or you can just go for the cheaper option and buy a silicone cover to go over the existing facial interface that you get with your Quest. But whatever accessories you get, I would say hands down, a good head strap and a good pair of over-ear headphones are almost essential. In addition to lens protectors, of course, if you wear glasses. The next step is about motion sickness or VR sickness, which are essentially the same thing. If you're lucky enough not to experience motion sickness in VR, then feel free to skip ahead because this won't apply to you. But if you are like me and you are sensitive to motion in VR, then stick around because there are a few things we can do to limit it. So many games have comfort options, such as this tunneling effect when moving that blocks peripheral vision and helps with motion sickness. So the first thing you should do is always check the game's comfort options and turn them on if experiencing any kind of motion sickness in game. 
There are also some things you can do physically to prepare yourself, such as making sure you're well hydrated, making sure you're in a well ventilated room that's at a cool temperature, and even get a fan set up to blow on you as you play. Now that last one might sound strange, but it does help. Long term, you can improve your sensitivity to VR motion more permanently like I did. Now when I first started, I couldn't play a game with full motion for even five minutes without feeling very ill. Now, I can play for hours with full motion with little to no discomfort, and here's how. First, you need to learn the signs of when you are beginning to feel motion sick. For instance, I start to get this weird prickly heat sensation. That's one of the first signs for me. Then you play a game that triggers your motion sickness a little. Not too much, but just enough to get to that point where you start to feel those first signs and symptoms of motion sickness. And as soon as you start to feel them, stop playing immediately. Then wait until you feel fully recovered before attempting the same thing again and keep repeating the process. What you should find is that your body begins to adjust to the motion, to adapt to it. And you'll know it's working as you should notice you can play for longer periods of time with less discomfort the more you do it. If you're like me, you like to keep your stuff in tip top condition, and there are a few things you can do to make your quest last a bit longer. Stick to the official charging plug. I would avoid using anything else, especially fast chargers, as this could damage your charging port. Try to charge your battery when it's around 20 to 80%. Only charging when it reaches about 0% can be bad for the battery. Get a magnetic charging cable. This will reduce the wear and tear on your charging port. Only use high quality microfiber cloths to clean the Quest lenses. You can't just use any type of cloth and especially avoid using any kind of liquid as you can damage your lenses doing this. So these are just a few tips to extend the lifetime of your Quest. I'm sure there are many more. And if you have some, let us know in the comment section below. Android apps. The Quest is an Android device and this means there are many Android apps that work for it. Some Android apps you can install directly from the headset, but most you will need to sideload using a cable and computer. I find the best way to do this is to get SideQuest, connect your headset to the computer, make sure you allow permissions to transfer files from inside the headset, then you can drag and drop the .apk file which is the app and you drop it on the SideQuest logo and that will install it on your Quest. Now you usually find the app in the unknown sources section or sometimes the channels area of your Quest. Many of these Android apps work but some of them don't and so there can be a bit of trial and error there. But you can sideload some pretty cool stuff like these Android emulators you see me playing here. If you want to know more about playing these emulators on your Quest I have videos linked in the description below. This next tip, which I'm going to call hacks, are simply those clever things people have come up with ever since the Quest was released that can improve your Quest experience with little to no cost. And there are lots of these, but here are some of my favourites. So if you want to transport your Quest but don't have an official carry case, it might sound very simple, but why not use the box? It has a very small form factor and everything fits snugly inside. But if your Quest has something like the official Elite Strap attached, making it too large for the box that it came in, you can use the official Elite Strap box. As you can see here, I fit it in quite comfortably. I just have to take out some of the original inserts and it fits fine. And as an extra bonus hack, why not use the cardboard insert that it came with to protect the lenses? So here's another favorite hack of mine. If you have an old Wiimote at home, you can take the wrist strap from that Wiimote and use it to replace the one on the Quest 2 controller. I really like the Wii wrist straps. They're thicker, they have a better clip, and I just find they feel a lot better around my wrist than the ones that come with the Quest. Now, if you don't have these straps at home, you can also buy them, and they don't cost much at all. Another favorite controller hack of mine is to loop it round the ring on the controller like you see I'm doing here. Just pull through that plastic toggle and put it all the way down so it tightens around the ring and then you put the plastic toggle back into the base of the controller and then put on the battery cover and then you have these hand grips that essentially attach the controller to your hand without you needing to grip it all the time. 
And if it does feel a little bit tight for your hand, you can do something like I did here. Use a cable tie to lengthen the wrist strap so your hand fits better. My next tip, you might have noticed this on the top of my headset and wondered what it's for. It's a bit of padding that helps make the top strap more comfortable on top of my head. And it actually comes from the shoulder strap of this sports bag, but I'm sure any other sports bag will do. I just happen to have this sports bag laying around. So I use this one and it gives you a little bit of extra comfort for no extra cost if you have one of these bags already. And my next tip is about a battery pack holder. So you can fork out some extra cash to get one to attach on the back of your head strap, or you can get a long enough cable so that you can just put the battery pack into your pocket. So you don't have to buy a battery pack holder and can save yourself a little bit of money. And one more hack before I leave it here with this tip. We have the interpupillary distance or IPD settings on the headset. So depending on the width between your eyes, you'll have the space between the lenses set to either one, two or three, depending on how far apart your eyes are. But did you know that if you adjust it very slightly, you can actually nudge it into a position between the numbers. So you can see here, I've got it between two and three. Now what this does is it gives me an extra IPD setting. So IPD setting one is actually 58 millimeters, but if I nudge it between one and two, I get a new setting with about 61 millimeters of space between the lenses. If I nudge it between setting two and three, I get another new setting with about 66 millimeters of space between the lenses. So give these new IPD settings a try. You never know, you might find them to be more comfortable than the standard one, two, three settings that you have available. Now my final tip is connecting your Quest to the PC. Now if you think that your PC isn't powerful enough and you don't have the money to upgrade it, then stick around because there might be another option that might be more affordable for you that will still allow you to play those awesome PC VR games like Half-Life Alex, which in my opinion is the best VR game out there currently. Now it's probably pretty obvious why you want to connect your Quest headset to your PC to play PC VR games. Firstly, it hugely expands your VR game library and also it enables you to play games that are graphically superior to the standalone Quest games, given all that extra juice that a powerful gaming PC has. So if your PC is powerful enough to run these VR experiences, there are a couple of ways you can connect your Quest headset to your computer. You can do it via cable, either the official Oculus Link cable or a third party one. And as long as it's a good enough cable, it will give you a no latency experience. But of course the disadvantage it is that it is wired. But the good news is you can play wireless also. If you have a good enough Wi-Fi network, you can connect using something like AirLink, which is a free Oculus service that lets you play PC VR titles wirelessly. There is also Virtual Desktop, which is in my opinion better than AirLink. It has more features, but of course you have to pay for that one. But if you don't have a high-end PC and you don't want to fork out the money for one, you've also got cloud-based services like Shadow. For about $30 a month, you can subscribe to this cloud-based service and what it does is it allows you to access a high-end computer through your internet connection and stream it through your device. As long as you've got an internet speed of 15 megabits per second or more, then you should be able to run this cloud service, which allows you to play PC VR games by streaming them through Shadow. Now, if you're gonna go down this path, there is also Pluto Sphere, another cloud-based streaming service that you can check out and compare with Shadow to find the best one for you. So what do you think of my top 10 essential tips? Are there any that you didn't know about and are gonna use now? Or do you have your own tips? I'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. So that's about it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.